Hey, it's Austin Meyer, the author of X-Plane, and today we are going to talk a little bit about the X-Plane flight model, how it works. X-Plane is based on something called blade element theory, where the wings, the tail, the propeller, all the blades that move through the air are broken down into elements, and we find the forces acting on each element. So we're looking at my Lance Air Evolution here in Plane Maker, but what we're seeing is the 3D object that was created by an artist that looks exactly like the airplane. But let's look past that 3D object into the mathematical description of this airplane that X-Men uses to figure out how it's going to fly. I'm going to go to the expert menu, invisible parts, and show just parts in Plane Maker. Now, what we see is the actual aerodynamic description of this airplane that X-Plane interacts with the air. You'll notice the wings, the tail, the propeller, they're all broken into these strips. Each of these strips is an element, and each element has its own angle of attack, airspeed, coefficient of lift, drag, and moment, and that's what builds up the forces on the airplane in flight. So, let's go on ahead and pop over to X-Plane and see how this works. Here we are in the aircraft, and I'm going to hit, and you should do this too, Command-M. When I hit Command-M, I'm going to start to see all of the forces and velocities acting on the airplane. The first one we see here is element wind delta. This is how the air is accelerated over the airplane by the airplane. No surprise, the propeller is kicking the air back. No surprise, the air is getting kicked back over the wings and tail. And if you've got a really sharp eye, you'll notice that the air is getting kicked up at an angle on the left that's coming up and on the right that's coming down. And up on the vertical stabilizer, the air is being kicked over to the right. Why would that be? Well, what you're seeing is the spiraling propeller slipstream. And as that spiraling strip, ugh, as that spiraling slipstream moves over the fuselage of the aircraft, it's lifting this left part of the wing up, this left part of the tail up, this right part of the tail down, and this vertical part of the vertical stabilizer, it's pushing it over to the right. And that spiral slipstream is responsible for why the airplane pulls to the left when you add power. Let's go ahead and hit Command M again, and now we actually see the speeds involved in knots. Hit M again, and now we're looking at the element forces. There's some force coming out of the propeller here. <laughs> There's three big forces coming out of the landing gear. What's that? Well, that's what happens when you sit on the ground. All right, well, sitting on the ground is boring. I'm going to the B key to turn off the brakes. We're going to add a little power, and we're going to start flying. So as we're building up speed, what you're going to see is while the landing gear still is putting out forces, indeed, you can see some new forces building up. Lift on the wings. And as I raise the nose, that lift force on the wing comes up. I'm going to make it a little later in the day so you can really see the force vectors. So as we climb up, you can see the lift coming from the wings. And you'll notice there's a lot of lift here in the intersections of the wing and almost none on the outboard portions of the wing. Why is that? Well, you may notice we have our flaps down. And the flaps down on the trailing edge of the wing adds a lot of lift. Let's retract the flaps. As we retract the flaps, the airplane kind of settles down a bit and the lift moves outboard, out of the portion of the wings that have the ailerons. All right, I'm seeing some big red lines coming back here. They look like drag lines. These are slowing us down. Well, that's the landing gear. That's why we made the landing gear on this airplane retractable. As we retract the gear, the red lines will disappear boop, as the gear retracts. Let's hit Command M again. Now, we see the forces where the percentage of the maximum lift that's being produced by the wing at this speed is on display as well. Ah, uh, <laughs> climbing out over Lake Champlain in Vermont. This is exactly what it looks like in reality at sunset. Command M, stream delta. Now we're seeing how the air is accelerated by the propeller for the whole airstream. And sure enough, you can see that kind of spiraling slipstream moving around the fuselage coming back from the prop. Command M again. Now we see the delta in knots. Command M again. Now we see streamlines like they have in those car commercials where they show smoke moving over the aircraft. And you can see just a little bit of a spiraling slipstream from the prop. Command M again shows weight turbulence. And I've got a new mathematical model that actually applies the induced drag from the wing over time to spin this air 
uh, to, to get that weight turbulence going. So it's actually uh, first principles math showing how that weight turbulence works. Command M again, ridge slope effects and microbursts. So if you want to go to have a microburst and you can do that, let's see, with edit failures world and ah, microburst. Well, activate that and a microburst will happen over the nearest airport. This is best done. Oh, and there it is. Look at that. Woohoo! That would be a real problem for you if you were trying to take off around there now. Um, Command M again, and well, we've gone through all the settings. So that's a quick look at how we can find the forces acting on the aircraft in flight using the blade element theory model that uh, the X-Plane is based on.